<coughs> Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. Um, we're looking at Psalm 27, it's a sermon. I've preached this in uh, a couple of churches and um, I've done a sermon before online but uh, I'm going to do it again and I hope it blesses you. Don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com and uh, Facebook and Twitter uh, and let's look at this psalm. So, I just pray, Father, I just pray that you bless this message, anoint it for your glory and I just pray that you touch hearts, Lord, and minister to people, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. So, it says in Psalm 27, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart should fear. Though a war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. And now my enemies, uh, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy, I will sing ye, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou said, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, and the Lord will take me up, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path, because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and much has breathed out cruelty. I had fainted, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So, if you could read that psalm, meditate on it, and I hope it's a blessing to you. The title of the sermon is, The Battle is the Lord's. David could have focused on his army to get him out of trouble. He could have used a military brain to get him out of trouble. But he trusted in God rather than the flesh. We see in Psalm 27 verse 1 that God is light. And the Lord is my light and my salvation. We, say, we see verse 5 that we can hide in God. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in the, his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. In verse 10, he, he, he will not forsake you. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. He will not forsake you. Verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Without God, we lose our protection. Uh, Voltaire, the French philosopher, philosopher, when he was dying, said, I must die, abandoned by God and men. Charles IX, King of France, died in 1514. He said, what shall I do? I am lost. I see it well. These people didn't have God, and therefore they felt that they hadn't God. They, they felt that God was not for there for them. Because they had departed from God and ignored God, they didn't have the protection of God. But we who believe in God know that he's there with us today. You could read uh, Nahum chapter 1 verse 7, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. God is with us and God will help us and God will give us strength. Psalm 18 verse 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Psalm 91, 2, I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. 
and Psalm 20 verse 7, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord. Number one, God is the light in the battle. Psalm 27 verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Sometimes we meet opposition and difficulty and we cannot see a way forward. But God is the light that can see a way forward for us in the battle. John chapter 12 verse 35. John 12 35. John 12, 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Ye a little while is, is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. In the midst of the battle, Jesus is the light. He said, I, verse 46, in John 12, 46, I have come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. God is light, and he will guide you in the midst of your battles. Charles Spurgeon says, God is our joy, comfort, guide, teacher, and every sense our light he is a light within, a light around, light reflected from us, and light to be revealed in us, to be revealed in us. I'll read it again, C.H. Spurgeon. God is our joy, comfort, guide, teacher, and every sense our light. He is a light within the light around, light reflected from us, and light to be revealed to us. In, 18, uh, in 1528 to 1558, there was a lady called Alice Driver. She was an Ipswich martyr. She was a plough girl. And she debated with the bishops and she rung rings round them, was able to show them that what they were teaching was error. And they put a chain around her neck and, and set her on fire. She said this, as they put the chain around her while she's in the fire, Here is a goodly neck, neckerchief, blessed be God for it. God is light. And he will comfort you in the midst of your pain and in the midst of your darkness. There she is in the fire with a chain round her neck and yet God is with her. God has given her strength. 1 Timothy 6.16 1 Timothy 6.16, uh, 1 Timothy 6.16, yeah. Who only have the mortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto whom no man hath seen nor can see to whom be honour and power everlasting. Amen. God is light. In a, a, unapproachable in his glory. Romans 8.31 Romans 8.31 So if God is light, and he, that means light wants to lighten up the darkness. It means light wants to bring comfort in the darkness. Light. That is what you need at the moment. Romans 8.31 what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So don't focus on the darkness. Don't focus on the battle. Focus on God who is the light. And he'll show you a way around the situation. He'll show you a way through the situation. But don't let the darkness pull you down. Don't let the darkness beat you up. Don't let the darkness get to you. Keep your eyes focused on the Lord, for he is the light. And he will guide you in this battle. Number two, God is the defender in the battle. Psalm 27, verse 2 and 3. 
When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fell. Though a host should they camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. He had to deal with, the psalmist had to deal with, a, a multitude of attacks. In Psalm 27 verse 12, he has to deal with slander. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, such as breathe out cruelty. Imagine troops going down into Afghanistan, into the Halman province, in the Halman province there the British soldiers were surrounded by thousands of Afghan soldiers shooting from left to right. There the British soldiers are surrounded on the rooftop. Do you feel like that today? Do you feel surrounded? Do you feel embattled? People have slandered you. Maybe people have abandoned you. Psalm 27 verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. He'd been abandoned. He'd been slandered. The old Puritan William Gurnall says, when your head is above water, it can't drown. They might have cut you down, they might have broke you, they might have uh, abandoned you, they might have hurt you, but my friend, you're still alive, your head is still above water. Psalm 41.10 Yeah, I know it was tough, I know it was hard, I know they crushed you, I know they ripped into you, I know they hurt you, but your head is above water. God is with you. You ain't down, you ain't finished yet. You ain't finished yet, my friend. You are still in the fight, you are still in the battle. He said, Jason, I don't know, I'm tired, I'm discouraged, I feel like giving up, I feel like I've been broken too much. Okay, Psalm 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be thou not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yet I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Fear not. Fear not. Psalm 49, 15. Psalm 49, 15. Can a woman forget a suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Ye, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Your circumstances right now might scream at you that you are abandoned. They might scream at you that you've been slandered. They might scream at you that you have been broken. But his word says, Can a woman forget a suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Ye, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. God has promised you that he is with you right now. And he's not only promised you that he is with you right now, but in a tenderly and fatherly loving way he cares for you right now. For every minute detail of your life, for every challenge that you face, he cares for you. Psalm 27 verse 5. So yeah, Jay, but you don't know, bro, I, my, my dreams have been crushed. Psalm 27 verse 5. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of the tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. No one can crush your dreams. Because your dreams are not in the hands of men. Your dreams are in the hands of God. And it is God who has the last say of your life, not men. It's his battle. And he goes before you right now and he fights your battle. So, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Corinthians 16, 13, you said, Jason, you don't know, bro, I've, I'm beaten up, bro, I'm beat, I'm beat, bro, I'm beat, 
I can't go on anymore. My marriage is too tough. Look at my eyes, my eyes, there's a, my eyes, Jay. In my marriage, my eyes, there's no, the, my eyes are dead. I've lost hope in my marriage. I've lost hope, bro. I, I just don't feel it anymore. I just don't feel that I, I can go on anymore. Every day is like a day of death in this marriage. He said, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I feel in my ministry they've ripped me to shreds that the congregation is so critical of me and I just feel I can't go on anymore or it might be that you've just one tragedy after another tragedy it just keeps going on and on and on and you just wonder when is it going to end For my own family, one member is in, is in hospital, another member when in hospital has just come out of hospital and these things go on and on and on and we just wonder, well, where is God in all this? 1 Corinthians 6.13 Wish you stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. Be strong. David Clarkson said, one drop of divine sweetness, excuse me, one drop of divine sweetness is enough in the very agony of the cruelest death to cry out with joy. Let's see that again. One drop of divine sweetness is enough in the very agony of the cruelest death to cry out with joy. In other words, when we're in the midst of the battle and the pain, one moment of prayer where we're touched by the presence of God is enough joy to help us on our way. You will get through this situation. You will pull through. You know why you will pull through? Because even though you're like a battleship that has been in the wars, imagine a battleship with guns and turrets and it's been in a battle where there have been other ships firing at it <laughs> and, and the, battle come, the ship comes into harbour and it's got holes in it and its turret's been shot off and it's been in the war zone and that's how you feel. You feel like you've been in a war zone, an emotional war zone and you think you're not going to get through it. Well God's with you uh, and God does not abandon you in that situation, but God will take you through and he, he will guide you. Like a steady, steady fatherly hand, he will guide you through the choppy waters in his goodness and love. He will protect you. God is the defender in the battle. Number three, God is the seeker of worship. In the battle. Let's turn to Psalm 27. Verse 4. One thing I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Verse 8. When thou said, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, I seek. John Welsh, a preacher in 1568, was at a prayer meeting in 15... He lived from 1568, but... He was at a prayer meeting in 1596. And the power of God came down so much he was in tears. Turn to James chapter 4 verse 8. James 4 verse 8. Please get your Bible out. 
James 4 verse 8, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. He's bigger than your problem. He's bigger than your problem. Psalm 96. He's bigger than your problem. Psalm 96. Verse 8 and 9. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his, his name. Bring an offering and come unto his court. So worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Praise Him, praise Him, worship Him, glorify Him. Bring Him honor, praise Him, worship Him, glorify Him. He said, but I can't, I'm going through pain, I'm going through difficulty. Worship Him, praise Him, honor Him. Glorify Him, magnify Him. And God will be with you in the midst of that difficulty and He will, he will give you the victory. Do you remember when they, when they came, Joshua and his army came to Jericho? Rather than go straight in and take that city, they had to just walk round and blow the trumpets and praise God before the wall came down. Sometimes in the midst of life, the battle's too fierce and too difficult. Just praise God. Just worship Him. Don't worry about the battle. Don't worry about the fiery darts that are being thrown at you. Don't worry about the pain. Don't worry about the difficulty. Don't worry about whatever's going on around you. No. No. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Glory to Him. Honor Him. Bring glory to Him. Worship Him. Praise Him. Glory Him. Acknowledge who He is. Glory to Him. Majesty on high. The Savior. The glorious Father. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Glorify Him. And the walls will come tumbling down in your marriage. The walls will come tumbling down in your ministry. The walls will come tumbling down. Whatever it is that seems to be oppressing you right now. The walls will come down. Stick on a praise tape and just keep worshipping. Stick on a, 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 a ministry tape or a sermon or a worship tape or whatever. Sing, get an old hymn book and sing some old hymns. Get the Psalms and sing the Psalms and uh, go on YouTube and listen to some worship songs and just worship God. Sing some of the old songs you learn at Sunday school and sing them and praise God. And strength will rise and victory will rise and you'll know power and blessing and God will make a way. God is seeking worshippers today. Rather than be cloud down by all the oppressive difficulties that you face right now, and they are many, and they are difficult, and they are hard. Just praise Him. Keep praising Him and worshipping Him. And you'll see a difference in that situation. Number four, God wants you to wait in the battle. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Verse 13 and 14. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14. Wait till the Lord be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. When a woman is pregnant, she has to wait before she gives birth. Nature tells us through that that good things come through waiting. Psalm 27 verse 6 For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me upon a rock. We can hide in God and rest in God and wait for him to give us the victory. One writer said, Wait at his door with prayer, wait at his foot with humility, 
weighed at the table with service, wait at his window with expectancy. Let's read that again. Wait at his door with prayer, wait at his foot with humility, wait at the table with service, and wait at his window with expectancy. Psalm 40, uh, Isaiah 40 verse 31. Comfort ye, comfort my people, says your God. Verse 31, that was verse 1. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Sometimes, rather than going into the battle, rather than um, saying something in that situation, Rather than jumping in that situation and trying to sort it out in your own strength. Rather than rushing in where fools fear to tread. Rather than rushing in and speaking. Rather than rushing in and fighting in the flesh. Saying things in the flesh. Doing things in the flesh. And if you do it in the flesh you'll only make a mess of it. No matter how big the battle is. No matter how tough the battle is. If you go in the flesh, it's only going to get worse. If you minister in the flesh, it's only going to get worse. If you, sh if you go in the flesh, it's only going to get worse for you, my sister, my brother. You go in your marriage, you go in the flesh, it's going to be bad for you. You go in your ministry in the flesh, it's going to be bad for you. And it's tempting to go in the flesh. You know what I mean? Your husband's doing your heading. Your wife's doing your heading. They're not responding the way you want. They're not showing you the love that, that you want. They're not, they're not reciprocating in, in, in love the way you want. And so you can react in the flesh and get angry and annoyed and, and frustrated. And, and then you can express it verbally to your wife or to your husband. And, and then it does not minister grace and life. But it's now ministering more and more death within your marriage. And then in your ministry, you have people who are being unkind to you, who are being aggressive to you, perhaps leaders that are, are, are doing a coup d'etat, trying to take over the church and trying to get you kicked out, and, and they are nasty, and the temptation is for you to deal with it in the flesh and to you to round upon them and give them a piece of your mind, and you may be justified in doing that, but when you do it, when you open your mouth and you speak in the flesh, to your leaders because they backstabbed you, then you will make it trebly worse. And the rebellion will get worse in your church. Because you moved in the flesh and you didn't wait on the Lord, but you moved in your own strength in the battle. And wherever there is a battle, whether it be in the world, whether it be in the church, whether it be in your own private life, the moment you take on that battle in the flesh, you will make it three times worse. So sometimes it's wise just to make a step back and say, you know what, they've ripped into me. You know what, my wife's hurt me, my husband has hurt me, but I'm not going to retaliate. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to pray. And I'm going to worship the Lord. And I'm going to wait upon him. You know what? My church have ripped into me. And they have broke me. My leaders have turned upon me. But you know what? I'm not going to react in the flesh. I am going to sit and wait upon the Lord. Renew my strength in him. And hear from him. And let him deal with it. Wait upon the Lord. I know some of you husbands and some of you wives, uh, uh, he's hurt me, uh, 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 and you, you want to get it out, you want to speak your mind, you want to sort it out. But all you're doing is you're making a spiral of death in your relationship because you're not speaking life, you are speaking death because every word that's coming out of your mouth 
is critical rather than building your spouse up and it's making it worse so it's better to just take a step back you say yes but you don't understand that they are in the wrong or maybe they are but you're not making it better because it's maybe the problem is that you know more than God maybe it's because you think you know better than God that you're saying stuff but actually you're not saying stuff in the in the spirit you're saying it in the flesh and maybe you need to sit back and be humble before God say you know what God I thought I had this sus but I don't have this sus I am making this worse and I don't know why my marriage is going like this I don't know why the situation is like this and I'm, and I'm pulling back God and I'm going to seek my face with you and, and you speak to me and you minister to me and you download to me as I read the word of God and show me where I'm going wrong show me the answer to this situation and every battle you face you need to be saying Lord I don't know how to get through I don't know how to deal with these people I don't know how to deal with this battle but Lord I'm going to sit back I'm going to receive from you I'm going to wait upon you I'm going to minister myself the word of God I'm going to pray read pray read pray I'm going to wait upon you and as I wait upon you you will give me the victory I'm not going to look to the left I'm not going to look to the right I'm not going to look to the pain I'm not going to look to the injustice I'm not going to look to anything else but him and say Lord I wait upon you I wait upon you I can't beat these people. I can't beat the situation. I'm locked in God. And maybe that's where God wants you. Maybe that's what God wants from you. To be locked into him. So that you will say it was him who gave me the victory. It was God that gave me the victory. God gets the glory in this marriage situation because it was him who gave me the victory. God gets the glory in my ministry because it was he who gave me the victory. Maybe God has shut you up in a situation where the battle is so fierce that you cannot deal with it in your strength. And maybe he's done that to get you and corner you so that you have to stop and sit back and let him deal with it and realize that in the end you need to trust in him. That maybe in your marriage you've been looking to men to help you in that marriage maybe in your ministry you've been looking to men to give you accreditation give you whatever you wanted from men but maybe God is saying no you need to learn that it's not from men that you need it's from me that you need help it's from me that you need strength for your marriage it's from me that you need strength for your ministry you need to depend upon me and I'm allowing this situation, this fierce battle that you face so that you have to come and kneel before me and wait upon me and I will give you the answer and I will show you that I am your sovereign God and I will make a way for you but you have to wait upon me. And we don't like that because we like to be independent, we like to be resourceful, we like to solve things ourselves, we like to sort it out we like to be in control every one of us likes to have control but God puts us in situations where the battle is too fierce too difficult too hard that's when we need to not go in the flesh but retreat and minister to God in praise and worship and wait upon him and he will make a way he will make a way Does that make sense? So stop going in the flesh. Be at peace and rest and wait upon Him. Psalm 56, verse 8. Psalm 56, verse 8. Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears in thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? He knows the tears that you're shedding. 
He knows the tears and the pain that you're going through. He holds your tears in his ball. And he knows everything that you need. So trust him. Trust him. Churchill said this, the courage to continue. We need the courage to continue. Let's turn to Psalm 31. There's so many scriptures that we could look at, but Psalm 31. Twenty-four. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Ye that hope in the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. My message to you today is, you can trust him in the battle. Don't go in the flesh. God knows the way. He's the light in this situation that you're facing. So focus on Him and the light will show you a way forward. He's the defender in this situation. You don't have to defend yourself in this situation that you're facing. Just let Him defend you. God will defend you. Third, just keep worshipping God. Worship Him. And He will be with you. And then finally, wait upon Him. Just wait upon Him. And seek His face. And He'll give you the victory in the situation. It's not God's will for you to be so stressed out. So battle weary that you want to give up. To the point where you can't go on anymore. It's God's will that you be renewed day by day in His glory. So what you need to do is focus on Him. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, and in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me, therefore will I offer in the tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing ye, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy Lord I will I seek. Hide not thy face from me, put not thy servant away in anger, thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses arise up against me. And such as breathe out cruelty, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So I'm going to pray. And I hope this message will be uh, just an encouragement to you. Those who are battled weary today, um, I hope that's been a blessing. And may I just encourage you to read a book by William Gurnall, published by the Banner of Truth, called Christian in Complete Armour. Christian in Complete Armour, and it will do you good, it will help you. Published by the Banner of Truth, Christian in Complete Armour, and it will do you a power of good if you read that book, and it will be a blessing. So let's pray. Father, we come before you today, and We confess our sin, Lord, and acknowledge our weakness and failure. 
We acknowledge, Lord, that we often go in the flesh and battle when we should go in the spirit. But Lord, you're calling us to depend upon you and not upon the arm of flesh. And so, Lord, we depend upon you today. We acknowledge our foolish ways and blindness of heart. And Father, we ask that you go before us and that you give us victory as we wait upon you. Every battle that each one of us faces today, I pray that each of us would rest in you today and just know your peace and your love and grace and that we'd relax upon in you, Lord. And we pray, Father God, that you'd open the way and that you give us victory in our lives. Bless each person represented in this sermon today who hear these words. Just bless them and give them victory, Lord, in the areas of their life. Give them rest on each hand. Give them strength. And Lord, just bless them in all that they do for you. That they may know your love. And they may know your grace and peace. And they may know your joy. So bless them, Lord. Show them your love and show them your grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope that's been a blessing to you. So read that psalm and, and just go over this sermon. Keep going over it, meditating on it, praying over it, and asking God to speak to you through it. And, and I just pray that it will be a blessing to you and an encouragement to you. So God bless you. Keep your eyes on him and he will guide you in the midst of the battle of, that you face at the moment in your life. God bless you. And may... And may and may God's love shine upon you today. God bless.